This morning, Jan Crawford shows us the healing power of fly fishing. She went to Oregon and pulled on a pair of waders to see how one man is inspiring others with free outdoor adventures. Good morning, Jan. Well, good morning, John. So this man, Chad Brown, I mean, he says he was really at his lowest point when he found fly fishing. So now he's bringing different groups of kids and veterans to join him on the river, and they are casting their rods in Utah, Florida, the Arctic Circle, and across the Pacific Northwest. It's a bright, sunny day on the Crooked River in Central Oregon. Just around a bend, kids are angling for trout. But what's happening in this river runs much deeper than catching a fish. We're in the wilderness. We're only here for a couple more days, and we're going to enjoy it. There's no guarantee I'm coming back here with family. Yannette Garcia is a self-described city kid. Especially living with eight people, it's kind of rough sometimes, but, you know, it is a time to relax and just find yourself. That's what Chad Brown was hoping for when he started Soul River. The Portland-based nonprofit offers an escape into nature for veterans and kids who might not otherwise have the opportunity. What does fly fishing meant to you? It's a coping mechanism for me. It erases everything around me and allows me to focus on what's exactly in front of me right at that moment, basically. I'm, it may not have anything to do with getting the fish, basically, you know, uh, but I think, oh, I'm hooked. I got a fish. <laughs> Brown is a Navy veteran. He served in the Gulf and patrolled the dangerous streets of Mogadishu, Somalia. He returned home broken, desperate to escape the anxiety, blackouts, and nightmares brought on by PTSD. It all came crashing down to one place, and it stripped me from everything. I lost completely everything. I became homeless. Everything? Yeah. Homeless. I was homeless in the streets in Portland, Oregon. What was the lowest point? Finding myself in the bloodlines, sitting there pumping and trying to fill a pint of blood so I can get $20. I've never thought in my life that I was going to find myself in a place like that. And, um, and, and I was embarrassed. He started treatment at the VA for PTSD. He got a service dog named Axe, but it wasn't until a friend took him fishing that he found his real medicine. I was like a walking zombie with that much medication in your system. I couldn't smile. When you hooked that fish, what did that feel like? It's that jolt of energy of life that brought me into the present where I can actually be able to feel the air, feel the currents that I'm standing in the water. It made me alive. Brown says his doctors actually prescribed nature and fly fishing a different kind of healing he's passing along through Soul River. There are veterans out there that are fighting their stuff. There are also young people out there fighting their stuff as well. They're walking around uh, with like duct tape over their mouths, basically, it's right? It's trapped inside of them. It's trapped, right. If I can bring these worlds together where that veteran serves that youth and that youth serves that veteran, they're both having the, the wounded souls here. Fly fishing is my salvation. I come out here, this is my church, my happy place. After leaving the Marine Corps, Daniel Wynn was looking for another opportunity to serve. What Soul River provides to me are these short, perfect moments. Having the opportunity to teach a youth uh, fly fishing and then watch them catch a fish. And what's that like? <laughs> it's, uh, man, it's this ear to ear, you know, smile, feeling. Yeah. Tree bark, Tree bark really works. Because on these trips, kids also learn about the environment, conservation, and leadership. One's justice, dependability, initiative, decisiveness. I love the vets. They're like extremely amazing mentors. Try to pull some pieces out of what Dan is saying and apply to your personal life. Chad, you know, he went through a lot of rough times and he's here now and he's a leader and I really admire him for that. And when you say it's inspiring, I mean, what's the message from that? That you can do what you want if you dream about it and if you aspire to be that person, you can do that. Break it up in teams. Everybody down the waders, rods, still water. For Brown, he's found his purpose and hopes he's hooked a new generation of leaders. We all have our issues. We find different things in life or whatever we're going up against. The river has a way of listening, giving us that space. If it weren't for this, some of these kids might go a different direction. Might go a different direction, you know. And then on top of that, these kids know that these veterans have their back.
Now, both the kids and the veterans say there's a lot of new skills to learn on these trips, but they also learn about themselves. I mean, they're becoming more like self-aware and patient, uh, open, and really appreciative of opportunities. Nora. Wow, Jan, thank you so much to you and producer Kira Cleveland for bringing us that story. And it's a reminder of why our show is so great. You know, mm -hmm. we do these so types different. of stories and so different about how people are helping one another, helping others who've gone through adversity and challenges and have uh, changed things. Well, I better. just like the line he said, fly fishing is my salvation. That's a pretty great endorsement. Yeah, yeah. Something. And though when you're talking about those short perfect moments. You could feel the short perfect moments and hear it in the water. And the, I'm, I'm, that was a good one. I want to go to Oregon. Yeah. <laughs>